Welcome back to Be Hooked Crochet. I'm your host, Brittany, and this is pattern three of the four-part Tunisian crochet washcloth series sponsored by Clover USA. With the launch of their new interchangeable Tunisian crochet hook set, we're celebrating with four washcloth patterns. Each pattern will give you the chance to use your new Clover Tunisian hooks, learn some new Tunisian crochet stitches, and make something practical in the process. If you're following along with the series between August 13th and September 24th, 2017, head over to BeHookedCrochet.com slash washcloth series to enter to win an interchangeable Tunisian hook set from Clover. You can find that link right here on your screen in the top right corner. You'll find the giveaway, sign up form, and details near the bottom of that page. Now let's get started on washcloth number three. Washcloth number three begins with a slip knot. And then we want to chain 34. Once you have your chain of 34, we're going to go right into our foundation row. We're just going to flip over our chain so we're looking at it from the back, and we're going to find that second chain from the hook. So I have my first chain, my second there, and I'm going to insert my hook into the back bump just because it gives us a nice clean edge. We'll yarn over and pull up a loop, and we're going to do that for every single chain. Once we've reached the end, we'll have a total of 34 loops on our hook, which means we'll have 34 stitches. At this point in the game, you're pretty familiar with the foundation row. We've already worked two washcloth patterns in this series, and if you're just tuning into this one, I recommend that you have a look at the first two designs, and you can find those at BeHookedCrochet.com slash washcloth series. You'll find the pattern for the first two washcloths there, and also the information on how you could potentially win a Clover Interchangeable Tunisian hook set. So those are the hooks that I'm using here, and they're gorgeous. I really love these hooks. They're a beautiful bamboo material, definitely my favorite set of Tunisian hooks that I own. Now if you're watching this before September 24th, you can sign up for the giveaway at the bottom of that page that I just gave you. You'll need to complete all four washcloths to be eligible to win if your name is randomly selected at the end of the series, which will be on September 24th. So once you've worked the forward pass of your foundation row, we should have a total of 34 stitches on our hook. And that's going to be important for the pattern that we're creating here. We do have to work within a specific multiple. For the return pass, we're going to yarn over and pull through one to make that nice clean edge. And then we'll yarn over and pull through two all the way to the end of the row. So at the end of our return pass, our foundation row looks like this. We have a nice little framework to start row one. So let's talk about this stitch pattern for just a moment. We're going to be working with cross stitches and purl stitches. We saw the cross stitch back in pattern one, but the purl stitch is going to be completely new to us. It's a really cool stitch and it really adds a lot of great texture to this pattern. Now in terms of rows, we're going to be working a two row pattern repeat. So I'll demonstrate row one and row two here, and that will be the repeat for the remainder of the pattern. Okay, so let's talk about row number one. 
I'm singling out the first two stitches. Again, we never work into this one here. That's our little side stitch. I wanna focus on the first two. What I wanna do for those first two stitches is work a Tunisian cross stitch. So just to review, we're going to skip the first one and we'll insert our hook into the second one as if we were doing a simple stitch. So staying on the same side of the work and yarn over and pull up a loop. Then we'll need to circle back around to that skip stitch. Just kind of let the hook do its job there. Insert the hook the same way into that skipped stitch, just like that, and yarn over and pull up a loop. So there we've made a Tunisian cross stitch, and that's part one of our stitch repeat for row one. The next thing that we're going to do is work two purl stitches. So I'm singling out these next two stitches that I'm gonna work into for the Tunisian purl stitch. We always have to have our working yarn at the front of the work. So if you're a knitter, you can probably relate to this. What I'm gonna do is lay the working yarn in front of the hook, then you'll find the next stitch you need to work into and just keep that working yarn in front and slide your hook into that stitch. Now just pay attention to what my working yarn is doing here. I need to have it back here now so that I can yarn over and pull through the loop. And you may find it easier if you steady that loop with your thumb. So this is the working yarn that's creating that little purl bump there. I just like to pull it out of the way with my thumb so I can yarn over and pull through the loop. Now that's the Tunisian purl stitch. We want to work it again in the next stitch. So that's the stitch repeat for row one. We're gonna do a Tunisian cross stitch followed by two purl stitches. So I'm gonna locate those next two stitches. I'm always working in groups of two here and I'll work a cross stitch. So it's just crossing those two stitches here and now two purl stitches to follow. And we're gonna repeat that sequence until we get to the end of the row. Once you've made it to the end of your row, you will end with two purl stitches. And I know these are purls because I see these little bumps. And the last thing we need to do is work in the chain here on the edge or that little side stitch. Just like we've done with other patterns, we're gonna catch two loops of that chain, just like you see there, yarn over and pull up a loop. That finishes the forward pass for row one. The return pass is gonna be the same return pass that we've worked throughout this series and for a lot of other Tunisian crochet patterns. We'll yarn over and pull through one. That's gonna create that little side chain that we just worked into. And then we'll yarn over and pull through two until we get to the end of the row. Once we've completed the return pass for row one, our work looks like this, and we really can't see much of the pattern taking shape at this point. We need to move on to row number two, and always remember that we're going to be working in groups of two for this pattern. We're not changing anything with the cross stitch and the two purls. What we are changing is the order of that. 
So on row one, we've started with a cross stitch. Well, this time we're gonna start with two Tunisian purl stitches. Again, I'm just covering this with my thumb because I'm not actually working into it. I'm gonna single out the next two stitches and that's where I'm gonna work my two purl stitches. Now I'm going to follow that with a Tunisian cross stitch. And then the repeat is the same from here to the end of the row. Do two purl stitches next, followed by a cross stitch, and repeat that to the end of the row. Now since we started this row with two purl stitches, our last two will be a cross stitch. Then, of course, we don't want to forget to work in that last stitch on the side, those two loops of the chain to complete the forward pass. Now from here, the return pass is the same. Yarn over and pull through one, and then yarn over and pull through two until you get to the end of the row. Once you've made it to the end of your second row return pass, your work now looks something like this. And we've reached the point where we need to repeat the first two rows. So next we'll work a row one, and that's the one where we did the cross stitch first. Now before we get to that point, the hardest thing for me when I learned how to do this stitch was knowing where I needed to start if I had to put the work down because it seemed like I always forgot what the previous row was when I worked to that next row. So you will have to learn how to read your crochet. This is the term that we use for looking at your stitches and knowing what they are. So the Tunisian purl stitch always looks like it has those little bumps, kind of like what you would see with knitting. And the cross stitch, I mean, it doesn't really look like an X, but you will see that bar crossing over. So I see that these two are purl stitches, so I know that I need to work a row one next and start with a cross stitch. Now you're going to continue this repeat where you work row one and row two over and over until your work measures eight inches from your foundation edge. You'll need to stop once you finish the return pass of a row one when your work measures around eight inches. We're going to pick up there with the bind off and we'll work a row two for the bind off and that's going to complete the pattern. So work up your washcloth until it measures eight inches from the bottom edge to the end of a row one return pass. We'll pick up there with the bind off next. Once you've worked that repeat several times here, this is what your washcloth looks like. And as promised, I stopped at the end of a return pass of a row one. So that last row that I worked, I started with a cross stitch. That means I'm ready to pick up on a row number two, and that's gonna be our bind off row. We're gonna start that with our two purls as if we were working the row as usual. So like we've done for previous patterns and for a lot of other Tunisian patterns, we're gonna bind off in pattern. That's the term we use when we mean that we're working the stitches as we normally would, but we're binding them off as we go. So I'm gonna start off with two purl stitches. I'm gonna work the first stitch as I normally would So here's where we would normally stop. We would go ahead and work the next purl stitch, leaving the loops on our hook. But to bind off, we need to pull this loop through that loop here. And then we'll just find the next stitch, make a purl, work it, and bind it off. Now we're continuing on with our pattern. We're gonna work a Tunisian cross stitch next and we're gonna skip the next stitch and we'll pull up a loop in that next stitch 
and then we want to pull that loop through the loop on our hook. And we can really get confused here because it seems like we're working across stitches one, but really we have two stitches here. So I'm going to circle back around, catch that skipped loop, and it's always a little bit difficult to see. Pull up a loop and bind it off. The two purl stitches follow, so bind them off and continue working across the row in pattern, binding off each stitch as you go. Since we started our bind off row with two purls, our last two will be a cross stitch. We'll bind them off and we're not going to forget that last stitch. You want to insert your hook into the two loops of the chain, pull up a loop, and bind it off. Now leave yourself a tail that's about six to eight inches and then pull that tail through the loop on your hook. And next we just need to weave in the ends. The side facing us as we worked is the right side of the washcloth. We're going to flip it over to the wrong side to weave in our ends. You can see there's a nice bumpy texture on this side which is pretty nice. Just thread one of your tails on your darning needle and then we'll work it down a row so we can weave in the end along the row of stitches. There's really no right or wrong way to do this. What I like to do is find a row of bumps and weave in my ends around them. It's best if you can work this over a few inches, as much as you can with the tail. And then rotate it and weave in in the opposite direction. When that tail is nice and secure, we can trim it off. And then of course weave in the other tail. That wraps up pattern number three of the Tunisian Crochet Washcloth Series sponsored by Clover USA. Join me in two weeks from today on September 24th, 2017 for the fourth and final pattern. It's going to be a lot of fun. I know you're going to love it. And don't forget, if you haven't done so already, to sign up for the giveaway so you can be entered to win the beautiful hooks that I'm using throughout these tutorials. Now you do actually have to participate in this series in order to be eligible to win. So if your name is randomly selected from that pool of entries, you do have to show me proof that you've made all four of these washcloths. I'll ask for you to send me just a little picture if your name and email address is chosen. All right, I can't wait for the next pattern. Stay tuned. See you then guys. Bye-bye.